Hey guys, welcome back to Double D Vintage Baseball Cards. My name is Dylan, and I just got a really fun short one for you guys today. I got a card in the mail today from a friend um, who said, man, this card fits in your collection, Adam Vintage Sanctuary. And when he tells you he's got a vintage card for you that fits in your collection better than his, uh, you know it's good. Like, he is such a giving person and kind person. He knows that he can... He, dude, he loves to spread the joy of collecting. And he sent me the card, and I just opened it. I haven't looked at it deeply because I just wanted to, uh, wanted to get on here and kind of get my first impressions of it with you guys. But I also picked up a few cards um, over the last few weeks, some vintage cards that I haven't shared yet. And these are the ones I picked up, and they go with certain things as maybe you can guess in the background from seeing this and this kind of what this is going to be. Um, so the first card I'm going to share has to do with, the, it's a leader's card, but when you tie it all in, it's a special leader's card. It's one of the, I mean, man, you could say this about a lot of leader's cards, but Sandy Koufax, 1967 tops. Okay. He stopped pitching in 1966 had the triple crown year, the greatest, his greatest year ever. Had like 27 wins. The guy was incredible. He And he retired in 66. So this is part of the triple crown leaders collection that I really would love to obtain. And I'm working my way towards it. And I picked this one up. I think it was in the $40 range at an auction. It is glorious i mean look he had over 300 strikeouts 312 strikeouts just eclipsing the second guy it's insane and then you got jim bunning and bob veal but those are secondhand compared to koufax his last card basically with the other two when i achieved them to go with the triple crown of the great 1966 season um, so first I'll share this one. This is a 1966 card. So this is the card from his last season, and it's a leader's card. I mean, he had a spectacular season in 65 as well. Let's see what his strikeout ratio, 382. I mean, the guy was nuts. So I thought pairing these, I'm like, well, I got to pull out the other ones from you know, the ones that are connected. I didn't pull out a solo card because I wanted this to be combo cards. And I love this. And I picked this up not too long ago as well. This is probably a month old. I don't think I've shared this one either. Stunning example. I sold off so many leaders cards because they were diamond cut or off-centered. And I've been slowly accumulating. I haven't shared a bunch of them. But this one goes as well with those because this is Frank Robinson in 1966 happened to win the triple crown as well so you had a pitcher and a hitter in nine in 1966 win the triple crown unbelievable year in baseball for that reason right there alone it's like it's spectacular to think about so i can't wait to get all the leaders cards of frank robinson in the 1967 tops just like the Sandy Koufax. I think the Sandy Koufax is more special because that's his last year in cards and he didn't even play in 67. So I got this copy here. Just love it. And I think I've had this card forever. And as you can see, I don't know, maybe I haven't had it forever. Honestly, I can't remember at this point. I did so many buying and selling of cards. It does have a slight diamond cut to it. I would like to get more perfect example but i mean I, i'm not selling this one it looks glorious it is sick and look at those cards together they just look so good oh my gosh i'm so stoked on that one right there let's look at this one one more time since it just showed up the last week or so it's been on my desk look at that card sandy koufax triple crown Leaders card. Love them. Can't say this enough. 
Leaders cards are so great. They tell the history of the sport on the card with the image. With, and you get all these other insane players. I mean, look at these players on here. Killer, Powell, Bill, Gibson. Like, and literally, like, look at all those cards for so inexpensive. I bet you all those cards cost less than 125 bucks. Um, just glorious. That was probably like 35 bucks or something. If that. Um, all right. So let's move on to my next. We'll move this one and I'll move that over here for now. Last will be Adams, the big one of the night. Um, but the next card here, this one in the middle when I share it, I didn't bring out any other cards to go with this. This is just a random pickup. I saw it ending and I need this card because I sold mine off in the last year and a half. And I found this incredible copy of this Pete Rose 1966 Tops. I mean, it does go with the other ones. It's 66, so that's cool. I didn't even think about that. That is awesome. And Pete Rose, really stunning example of this card. Finding any 66 Tops card centered, any vintage card centered is hard enough. But 66 is is outstandingly hard if that makes any sense to pick up and then you got the cool image on the back with the rookie hat trophy i always thought it was rookie cup someone pointed out his rookie rookie hat actually and ever since then i've never looked at these cards the same it's so cool and look at this example i mean it is spectacular trying to get the surface just perfect there's no creases no there's no wrinkles and this is just happens to be in a glorious florida i am not searching for the grade ever i never ever do that the grade means nothing to me in fact i i just hope they're in lower grades because i get to save more money love this card really stoked to have it put that right there and the next card right before the big one one that showed up today, just now, um, and it's one that I had sold. It was I had one in eight OC, sold it for like one hundred and seventy five bucks, I think, at some point, um, and I found this copy randomly on my eBay search, as I do, and I I, I want every card from this set, like every Hall of Famer. I love fifty eight tops. And I found a great example of Frank Robinson's 1958 Topps card. Under a hundred bucks. I think I won this for $90, give or take five bucks. Well centered, not perfect, but it it's okay. I don't have to have perfection because I'm realizing it's almost impossible. Um, cards are cut differently, but if I can get one that looks Dead centered, when you pick it up and you look at it on the wall, that's what I'm shooting for. Anything in the 88 on my scale and above is spectacular. And this thing, the color, the image, everything about this card is, is, what is a perfect card for me. It's a perfect card in my collection. This is a 5.5. Look at that. Look at them. Oh my gosh. Look at the reds. Red legs logo there. Just look at the back. Playing basketball. Look at that. I love it. I just love it. I'm just so thrilled. It's anytime you pick up a card from the 1950s, it's it's a bonus. It's like, yes, you got one. You got a good one. Uh you got it for very, you know, I have no idea. I didn't I don't I, like I said, I rarely ever look up comps, cards like this. I just, I think I bid like 112 bucks. I'm like, that looks like a $112 card to me. And I think that Pete Rose, I paid $75 to under a hundred for it. Um, I have no idea what comps are on those grades. I don't care. That's not the, dude, I'm not, I'm not buying eights and nines. I don't need to look up comps. I just go like this card's worth to me $102. I probably bid and got it for I can't remember, oh, man, 70 to 100 in that range. 
God, just so stoked. So we'll take that one away. Leave that up since those are my three pickups. Vintage pickups in the last few weeks. And I could not be happier. Oh, I love, love, love that Frank Robinson. It just showed up. So I just want to spend some private time with him. Hang out with him a little bit. All right. Final showing. And this one is straight from Adam. Vintage Sanctuary Collection. So you know the thing is going to be just outstanding. One of the greatest eyes in the hobby. As far as what he picks up. It's, it's stunning. Actually, I'll leave these on the side. It's a work for now. Um, his stuff's just incredible. So he fa he's like, dude, you this fits in your collection. He wrote me a sick note right here. And me and Adam are roommates at the National. We had some great conversations at like 2 in the morning. And I, oh, we got to go to bed. And then, and then we, and the next guy keeps talking on our thoughts of condition and all of that. Like everything under the sun. Um, and so what he didn't know was I was reading a book about, I mean, he knows that I collect Roger Maris and he knows I'm some obsessed with the, the home run, legit home run record. I consider legit and Roger Maris and Aaron judge and everything that goes with it. And I sold this card, this Roger Maris 1960 card in the last year or so. And it was a eight OC. And I still have this. I'm not selling this one. And I collect the MVPs of all these. That's a whole nother collection I'm working on. And I'm slowly ticking them off. There was a point where I was only going to focus on those. And I tried. But I, dude, I couldn't find it. It's so hard to find a centered card. I'm like, well, I won't be able to buy a card. But like once a year. And so now I can hunt for the Dick Croak. Because now. Let's look at this gem. Let's look at this thing. I got the 1960 Tops. Roger Maris, insane copy. He sent me a photo and he goes, don't pay me until you have it in hand and you can look at it for yourself. Dude, I mean, I knew it was going to be perfect from the photos and it is glorious. And what he didn't know was this showed up today. Literally he texted me earlier, dude, it's going to be there. And I was working and I was listening to a book about Roger Maris. Um, and let's see if I can, I might tag it in the description, but I happened to be literally, when he texted me that, I had no idea. It was, they were talking about in the 1960 when in Roger Maris in 1960, he was on track actually ahead of Babe Ruth to top the record in 1960. A really, really far ahead. Which is crazy. I had no idea. I, I never I never put two and two together. I never realized that. I knew he had a good season in 1960. And he won the MVP because I have that collection I'm working on. But it was so fun to get that. And the card found me today as I learned that fact on that book. And look at this card. Adam, this is sick. So he was so kind. He is selling me this card for exactly what he paid and I couldn't be happier. Look at this copy. Ooh, he's such a perfect fit in my collection. And I so happened to just pick up such a sick... It's not even a card that has to do with Roger Maris, but I'm not going to share it yet because I'm, I'm, I want to do the video justice. And this, I just wanted to get on here and share it. Adam... I'm so stoked. I'm going to get on uh, Venmo right after this and send you the money for this. Dude, I love it. It goes perfect in my collection. I can't believe you gave that up to me. That means so much to me. And you'll see how good that fits. And now you know. You probably forgot I was doing the MVPs. And that's the MVP is first MVP season. So there you go, guys. I just wanted to get on here and share the joy of cards coming in the mail. And my friend Adam... So thank you, and we'll talk to you guys soon. Keep collecting. Be inspired. Don't be influenced by any of us. Later.